Welcome to the last session of this week in the Public Health Surveillance course. The session will give a brief overview of the course. I'm going to cover how the course is organized, and a lot of this, if not all of it, is in the syllabus, but I, I do just want to cover it briefly here. But be sure to consult the syllabus now and throughout the course, as all the details on everything you'll need are, are there. Just from the first few lectures this week, I hope you're getting a sense that surveillance is really fundamental to a fu effective public health practice. It's a core function of health departments and federal agencies like the CDC and also international agencies focused on health like the World Health Organization. We'll explore many aspects of public health surveillance and different surveillance systems in the coming sessions of the course, and these are some of the key areas that we'll be covering in future sessions. The textbook we'll be using is edited by Lisa Lee. It's the third edition of Principles and Practice of Public Health Surveillance. Lisa Lee is someone who's worked at the CDC, who worked at the CDC for many years in lots of uh, different aspects of surveillance. And she's edited this excellent third edition and, and has brought many, many other renowned experts on surveillance to write about, uh, to write the different chapters uh, selected for the course readings. And uh, we also have a required, some required article readings for the course that are included. And the PDFs of these required readings will be on the Blackboard site. So you can find the PDFs of the readings under the weekly materials section for each week. The course is a fully online course. It will be delivered using pre-recorded lectures by me and a few guest speakers. These lectures and other materials for the week will be made will made, be made available every Monday. Assignments are generally due by the following Sunday for a given week, and you'll be expected to engage around the content of the lecture and the readings on the discussion board, which I'll say more about in a minute. The midterm and the final exams will both be online. I'm your instructor, and we, we also are lucky to have two teaching assistants, Avantika Srivastava and Jenny Shen both of whom are epidemiology doctoral students. We ask that you submit all of your questions about the course that are related to logistical issues or course content, uh, clarifications and things like that using the discussion board. And that will help guarantee that you get the most rapid response. And the other good thing about that is that you have a, if you have a question about something uh, related to the course or the course content, it's quite likely that one of your classmates also has the same question or similar questions. And so by having these Q&A things happening on that particular section of the discussion board that we've created for this, everyone can really benefit from the whole process. On the other hand, if you have questions that are just related to you as an individual, such as questions about your grades, um, you can raise those issues directly with me, Avantika, and Jenny via email. In that situation, to get the fastest response, please email all of us simultaneously. We've designed the course so that everything can happen via Blackboard. The, the course announcements will be there, the syllabus is there. I mentioned the readings and assignments that will be in the weekly materials section. All of the assignments that you'll complete will be submitted on Blackboard and you will find all of your grades on Blackboard as well. For grading, we will use a blinded process to grade assignments and exams, so we don't want to know who submitted it. Of course, Blackboard can hide these details, but only if you don't include your name in the submitted documents, including the, fi the f file name. So. When, when you submit a Word file via Blackboard for one of your assignments, for example, or a PDF file, don't include your name inside the file or in the file name. As long as you submit it under your account, it will be linked to your details, and that way we'll be able to grade everything in a blinded way. In terms of grading, there are really five components and they're all weighted equally for this course in terms of how they contribute to your final grade. 20% is based on the four reaction papers that you'll submit over the course of the semester. These are based on assigned readings and I'll say more about them in a minute. 
Uh, there are three homework assignments. There's the midterm exam and the final exam. And your participation is graded by your engagement in the discussion, por dis discussion board uh, part of the course. So your, your posts on the discussion board are an important part of your, your grade for the course. So the reaction papers. In, in a few weeks, you'll be asked to write one, one to two page papers based on the assigned readings for that week. Uh, you'll be writing about all the readings for that week, not just some. So if there's four papers assigned to you to read, uh, your reaction papers should be based on those four papers. And the goal here is for us to ensure that you're, you're beginning to have an understanding of some of the main concepts, ideas, and content that are in the readings themselves, as well as gaining an understanding of the concepts and principles around public health surveillance that we're covering in the lectures and, and are being covered in the textbook. All the papers that you're assigned to read in a given week relate to public health surveillance in one way or another. So when I read these reaction papers, I look for a sense of your understanding of all the strengths and weaknesses of the different studies or analyses that are, are covered by the papers as it relates to your understanding of diseases and health outcomes and exposures or risk factors or other things that are under surveillance. You're expected to share your own thoughts and impressions of the readings. You can raise questions about as part of your reaction paper. These, these could be things that arise as you're reading and thinking about it and digesting the readings. And this is important. Your reaction papers shouldn't be a sequential summary of the readings and be like, you know, paper one said this, and then another paragraph, paper two said that, and then the next paragraph, paper three said this. That's not what you're supposed to do at all. Instead, what we really want you to do is to synthesize and look across the readings. Look for themes. Critically evaluate some of the theoretical, conceptual, methodological, or disease-specific content of the readings. Write about how these readings may relate to one another or, or not, or maybe they contradict one another, which can happen because there are really different perspectives on a lot of these issues. And so the idea here is to reinforce that in a given week, you really need to consider the readings as an interrelated whole when you write your reaction paper, rather than a series of unrelated articles. The readings are linked with the theme of the topic area of the week, among other themes that might jump out at you. So everything I'm saying here, as I mentioned, is covered in more detail in the syllabus. So please be sure to read all the instructions in the syllabus about the reaction papers before you start writing your first one. There's a class discussion board, which among other things is one of the ways that we gauge your participation in the class. Each week, based on the assigned readings and the lecture, you're expected to create two posts on the discussion board forum which will be specific for each week. One of these posts that you make should contextualize and contain one or more questions, clarifying points or insights based on the readings or the lectures for the week. And because you'll also be reading the post of your classmates, the second post that you have on Blackboard discussion boards in a given week should be a response to issues raised by your classmates or providing some of your own commentary on issues that they've raised. And you can, of course, do more than one response to your classmates, which is encouraged, but it's not required. We expect two posts, one that is coming from you and another that is in response to one of your classmates' posts. Our course team will review all the posts and respond as needed, and this will be the basis for your discussion board class participation grade. Again, more details on this are in the syllabus. In the past, we, we found that these discussion boards to be a very rich source of content and exploration that goes beyond the lecture and the readings and reflects the diverse perspectives and interests of our whole group. And lastly, if you need to reach us, you can make an appointment or send us an email. As I mentioned, if it's a question of general interest that you think your other classmates may also have, please use the discussion board Q&A section instead. Otherwise, if there are individual issues, we're here for you. Send us an email. Okay, that's all of it for this week. Next week, with some context and history under our belts, we'll delve into some of the nuts and bolts of public health surveillance 
and cover some of the core principles of public health surveillance. I hope you have a great week.